Morning Chris, how's Australia? Hope all's good. Thank you for joining. Could you let me know if the sound's all right before I go any further? Normally I talk for about 10 minutes and then find that I sound like Barry White. Jane, if you're listening, if you give me a check on the sound, I'd appreciate it, please. Jinx, how are you, sir? Oh, sound is good. Wow. I think Jane's saying it's good as well. Oh, voice is Barry White. Okay. Okay. Cheers, Scott. How are you, sir? Right. Ah. How about the sound now? Hi, Mark. How are you? Happy Sunday. It's a beautiful Sunday. I ought to be outdoors, but I wanted a race. So I'm picking a hard one. Sound is all good. All right. Hurrah. Oh, got to leave the jersey up. Got to observe good form for the live stream. Oh, so I hope people are good this morning. Scott, looking forward to 8 p.m. What have you got in store for us? Let us know in the comments. But I'm guessing bullet bail and a little bit of the good old fashioned mind head chaos. Oh yeah, yeah Jinx, I was in a TA artillery um, from about 2001 until 2006 when I got divorced. When I got divorced, you couldn't balance the TA and sort of being a single father at the weekends. Um, it was one of the things actually that probably contributed to my divorce, but I loved the TA. I was a command post officer um, and then a reconnaissance officer. Amazing, we often got down to the West Country, Scott, and um, trained on Salisbury Plain. Three KOM attempts and an ice cream, well that sounds pretty much perfection to me, sir. Hiya Simon, how are you? Good to have you on board. So tell us about Australia. Chris, um, how's the weather now? It must be a, a, quite a relief for it to not be quite as hot less risk of fire and you can be out on the bike I'm guessing Emily Ethan happy Sunday I hope it's okay for you being back at school after such a long holiday break but happy Sunday thank you very much for checking out the live stream <laughs> cheers Mark how's it going Mark are you having a good Sunday what are you up to no, I didn't deploy on Telic. Um, for Telic, there were so many regular army officers that wanted to volunteer that you couldn't, um, in, the, in the artillery, you couldn't get um, a kind of a posting, as it were. On, I think, Telic 3 and 4, you could get a watch um, posting where you're on the radio the whole time. But in all honesty, I didn't want to do that and spend you know, six, seven months away from the kids, sat on a radio. And if I'm honest, I think in a TA, because you only do three weeks of officer training and then a condensed um, course, whether it's your command post course or your, at the time it was forward observation officer course, I know it's fire support now. It was probably right that TA officers were not given the plan roles. I take it you were in the army, were you, Jinx? Spring. It's spring now, is it? Oh, right, I thought you'd had your summer and now we're in the autumn. Okay, so spring. Well, everyone loves spring. Oh, crikey. I forgot you're in Co uh, Melbourne. Well, I hope it all gets back towards normality. It seems that we're having a second kind of wave here in Europe, other than Sweden, where they built up some herd immunity. Hi Ian, thank you very much. How are you sir? Yeah, I forgot, I forgot to say who's racing. <laughs> well DB from DB Racing is racing, Petri Tuanen racing, Ian is in the Cat B's racing. What was your plan Ian? Hang on until the hammer drops. Yeah, that's more or less my plan as well Ian. Um, 
Mikiaki, uh, sorry, Mikiaki Namayura. Good luck, sir. And Devanya Singh, good luck to you as well. Yeah, the Royal Artillery Groom, yeah. Um, I was in the TA for a bit. Loved it. Yuha, thank you very much for joining, sir. How are you? <laughs> the gentleman, indeed. Yeah, Italy was fantastic. Really, really, really want to go back. And definitely will be back. Probably next year. I might try and squeeze something in this year, but I think that's unlikely. Lord of the statistics. How are you, sir? Good to have you on board. So, I'll go to the event before I forget. So this climb here is where the hammer's gonna drop in. Well, actually it's not. How remiss of me. Ian, this is a disgusting course because I think we go through the, um, that kind of rolling terrain. Um, what's it called? Tempest, Fug not Tempest Fugit Flat, the uh, Sequoia, I forgot what it's called. The forest, the rainforest and dinosaurs and all that kind of stuff. That is hell. So the hammer may drop there. Full career, nice one, Jinx. And um, which regiment were you in? Hiya, Darren. Good to see you, sir. Hope all's good. Two times draft. Oh, that's helpful to know. Thank you, Ian. <laughs> I'm not a connoisseur of Latin, Grim, but um, yeah, I think. I think I get what you're saying there, sir. <laughs> Which regiment were you in? Tony, thank you for joining and great to have you on the start line as well. What's your, um, what's your strategy? Ian and mine, that's to hang on grimly. Grim? Um, David, good to see you, sir. How's the training going with Mr. Lavarak? All good, I'm assuming. Oh, you didn't pass out, did you, Grim? But you had it, you gave it a shot. Nice work, sir. I mean, the army, proper, you know, full time, proper difficult. And respect to you, Jinx, for serving a full career there. Incredible. Hang on, Grimly. Well, there's three of us. Yeah, Quatch Quest. Yeah, tell us about it, David. The start, is that likely where the hammer's going to drop? Now, why have I picked this course? Next Saturday, I'm riding Leith Hill. Um, at the hill climb event. It's 1.4 kilometers, average gradient about 8%, but it's got some 16 to 20% ramps. Looks disgusting. Maximus, good morning, sir. So that's gonna be like a, you know, four and a half to five minute effort. And then on Sunday, Scott, Bullet, David Walker Blair, myself, and of course, Mr. Ed Laverack are racing um, the hill climb in Porlock, the Porlock Toll Road, a 20 minute effort. And so I did a couple of really hard efforts on Thursday and Friday. I did um, Highgate Hill West, two minutes 44. I can go faster. I did um, Swain's Lane and I went back and hit it again yesterday and got a PB, two minutes 30. And I had to absolutely monster the power. Um, so it was, that was basically a three minute effort. Um, so I want to see how I race in particular on the Epic KOM, which is about a 20 minute climb, not dissimilar um, to Porlock uh, today. Petri, good luck, sir. Hi, Paul's good. Hey, John. A live virgin. Well, thank you very much for joining for the first time, John. Obviously, I've seen you in the comments a lot on the vlogs. It's a very friendly crowd. Um, don't hesitate to ask any questions or just chip in. Um, it's the main reason I do the live streaming, in all honesty. The crowd, we're a nice crowd, I hope. Peaky Blinder, morning to you sir, I need a haircut. Saw you uh, training late last night, very late last night. Hope it was a good one. Who is um, Zav, former Aero Coach? I take it Zav is a bit of an expert. Hi Ian, thank you very much sir. 
How are you this beautiful Sunday? Your fans are engaged. I've got two of them engaged, Ian. Andrew? Any news in the William? I'm hoping to have the parts shipped. I had a replacement fork and handlebars in early October. It may come in time for me to race. It may. I doubt it. Uh, a hill climb in mid-October. But let's not hold our breath, eh? Right. 30 seconds. Yeah, David, if you could um, let me know when it gets nasty on the um, sand and sequoia bit, the uh, sequoias bit of the sand, I think it is. Oh, I see. Okay, so he's going to be a beast, Scott. Cheers. Two weeks and counting, Jings. It's been a long wait, hasn't it? Yeah, I, I try and remember, John. I try. I can't remember it all. And it gets increasingly harder, luckily, because I'm blessed with so many uh, more subscribers and our community is growing. Bear me a second. I've got a Google Chrome alert here. Right. Let me just settle. Hi, Will. Thank you for joining. How's it going, sir? Good cameraman in Italy, yeah, yeah. Davide is a beast. He got a P3 in a very, very high quality crit yesterday. Davide, respect to you, sir. So the cadence is high, but the confidence is low. Agnes, congratulations and respect on your first ever metric, not metric, Imperial Century. 160 km, incredible. Nice one, David. What was your time? Right, this is hard. I hate, for some reason, this bit of course is hell. Hopefully people won't give it quite the full beans because we've got the epic KOM and the out. David, do we have the bonus climb on the epic KOM? I'm not sure, I think we might. Whenever I think we don't, we do. Well, that is fast. Nice one, David. Power. How was your cadence? Just out of interest. Just warming up the glutes and the hamstrings. Hopefully warming them up, rather than knackering them. Yeah, Scott, I tell myself little lies.
careless. Very hard to set or find a rhythm. I think that's why I hate this bit of course. Oh, proper hard this. Morning, Mick. Training difficulty, 100%. I'll come back to that. Yeah, I've ridden a 32 enough now in Italy and at home to realize that when you get past 10%, often you have to get out of the saddle. On 50 or 75, you don't, unless you're strong like Ed Laverack. Having to work hard to stay in the bunch on the descent.
Pull the grip. Try and hold it. I think we got it back. Oh dear. Morning Kev. Let me know how the high cadence drills go. Build it up, warm up, 100, 110 RPM. When you feel good, minute at 120, back down to 110 and repeat. Try to keep the tension on the train. Tight core planted in the seat. Oh, boy, oh boy. Hey Ian, how are you doing? I think Petri's still with us. Where's DB? Nice one in, hang in there. It was a VO2 max, hell at times. Nice one Mr. Eyebrow, how are you Badger? Good to have you here. Thank you so much for your support. A windy one yesterday. Yeah, you deserve a line. That's the worst. I think even worse than light rain. Not heavy rain. Tuna shake, I mean Scott, yeah. WTF. God, this is horrid. There's DB. Hey Nils, how are you sir? Yeah, deep out climbers day, hell. Wouldn't do that in real life, would you? Perceived effort is lower. Hear me? Yeah. No, it's not. I wouldn't do that normally, David. I was experimenting. Didn't help. Alex, how are you, sir? How was the racing? I seen you back. How was the racing in Belgium, Flanders? Dennis. Cheers. Thank you for that, sir. Yeah, Mark. The RPM was excessive to say the least. Right, we hit the epic KOM very quickly. How did you do? Did you place well, Alex? Just, just amazing to be out there as well. Oh. Yeah, cheers, Neil. Doing fine, actually. Getting a little bit stronger. This is my biggest TSS ride ahead of um, Saturday.
climbing race up Leith Hill um, outdoors and then the Porlock Toll Road on Sunday. So here we are, Epic KM coming. This is going to be horrid. Just going to collect myself. Yeah, it's eased off for a reason, John. Check this out. Yeah, I can imagine a lot of people blew on the last climb. This isn't as bad as it often is. That was horrid. Hey Ryan. So does it have the radio tower? <laughs> I know you've already told me I missed it. Nice one. Cheers, David. Nice one, Petrie.
every bone in my body is saying slow down. Especially knowing that they're holding back. Yeah, Mark, disgusting. To your right, David. It's my phone.
Yeah, D Mark.
Hear me. Oh. Dear me, I'm in all kinds of trouble. From Decathlon. Really nice. Cheers, Lord. Oh. Thank you, Tom. Oh, dear me. I just didn't have the stamina to stay with them over that final bit. I went way too deep. Thank you, John. Oh, dear me. Dear me.
Cheers, Samuel. I'm in all kinds of trouble. <coughs> I should have relaxed the face. Yeah, David. Oh dear. Yeah, where would I be without a pain face? Oh my word, Andrew. Till it goes negative, yeah. Oh dear, what's going on here? In the wrong gear. I don't mind if these two from behind catch up. Yeah, imagine having the out. Well, this is in part why I picked this. I wanted to see how I went on a kind of 20 minute effort after, you know, two days of very sharp, hard, intense climbs, but small, one second. So for those of you who've joined a bit later, on Thursday, I hit Swain's Lane. I wasn't very happy with my effort. I tried to stay seated and only stand at the end and move between the big ring down to the small ring. Didn't work. So I hit it again on a Friday and mashed it. But on a Thursday, I also did Highgate Hill West. So basically talking about two hard three minute efforts on a Thursday and one on a Friday. And that's going to replicate the Leith Hill climb um, in Sat on Saturday. And then on a Sunday, we got the Porlock Toll Road. I did it last time round in about 1858, about. And so that epic KOM sort of replicates that. Only difference is you've got that nasty little run into it. But I tend to find that on the watt bike, where all I have to do is focus on the pedaling, the technique, the breathing, and I can get my head down and really suffer. I'm a tad more cautious outdoors for obvious reasons. Right, so just gathering myself. Right, so with the out, I'm gonna try and pace it. You know, 280 all the way up is not gonna happen. But hopefully I can ramp into it. Exactly. Very true, John. Yeah, they will come past if I don't speed up a little bit, you're right. Try and get it into sweet spot. Here we go. Oh, they did nearly come past there. I thought I was putting down enough watts there.
Right. Let's see if I can stay with this merry little band. Petri's doing well. Nice one, Petri. Keep digging. He was over a minute down on the climb. Shows how bad my descending is in part. Yeah, Agnes, some draft. Trying to recuperate, pamper myself a little bit. Yeah, it's true, Niels, the heart rate is lower outside because of it. You're hotter indoors. But I think this, the sheer ability to just focus on the delivery of power, certainly for me, makes it that bit easier than outdoors. Not much. My outdoor power on a 20 minute climb is about equal to my indoor power. But on a longer climb, definitely I lose a little bit. <laughs> Cheers, Agnes. So moments like this, I wonder why I sign up for such a hard race. How do you mean going uphill or downhill, Alex? You mean, yeah, average power. Yeah, because of the downhills, you're really not on the power ever. Gravity's doing the work for you. And so overall, average power is down. I agree with that, yeah. But on the climb, I reckon, because I'm concentrating, I'm about on a sort of 40 minute climb to an hour. I was about five to 10 watts lower outdoors. I tend to focus more on the cadence, Niels. I think with the cadence, the power and the speed come. Oh, this is harder than I'd hoped for. Hey Darren, how are you? Thanks for joining. <laughs> yeah, very true David. I keep myself over that repeatedly. Cinnamon buns, nice. Whoa. Post ride Pingy, what's one of those? Pingy. Yeah Mick. The level of concern is rising. The epic KOM was pretty emotional. Hey Georgia, how are you? 
How's the CrossFit and the general madness in your life or fitness? Ah, oh, beer. Nice. There are studies that show a beer immediately post-exercise raises testosterone and the process of recovery. Because normally beer reduces the testosterone estrogen balance. Ah. Only a a uh, bottle or a pint. Obviously, if you were to binge, you badly dehydrate yourself. And you put on a lot of body fat. The body burns alcohol calories before carbohydrates or body fat. Basically, that's why you don't drink much on a fat reduction phase. The moment you start drinking, it stops the machinery of fat loss until the alcohol is out of the system. So this is where you need to be in a little group in the jungle. It's so sticky that Petri had done real well to get within about 30 seconds. He's now back out there on his own. I don't like the jungle. Hey Alan, how are you? Hi hey Ruben, sorry, long time no speak. You've been putting in the usual massive rides I see, sir. How's it going? Sorry, I didn't see it at the top there. Martin, how are you, sir? Thank you very much. We had a dreadful run in to the epic KOM. And then I did a very nice power up the KOM. Just got dropped at the very end. No, they're not on Ed's approved list. Coach Laverack would not approve. Nice, Mick. You should go and hit that local um, that local climb, that steep one that you've got that you put on the YouTube. Yeah, that's the nice thing about a nice cold beer in the summer afternoons. Social. Agreed, Alex. Although I do like a shandy. I know, I'm a lightweight. So, tonight 8 p.m. we got Scott's Com Hunt TV premiere. Three KOM attempts, nice. And I think there might even be a lead out from Bullet Bale. And an ice cream is eaten. Even better. 8 p.m. tonight, check it out. Legs are feeling a little bit better now. Nice one. Meet you, I've got a hill climb on Saturday and Sunday next week. One of them is 1.4 kilometers. An absolute mash fest. How steep is your one? The one I'm doing is about 8%. Holy hell, Nils. You must have been high on the carbs, like flying. Yeah, Giorgio is no stranger to big food, as you can see from his uh, channel, Giorgio Capella Cycling. Check it out. We're talking like insane levels of fitness, whether it's strength, cycling, cyclocross, mountain bike, super good channel. Boy, oh boy, Giorgio, can you eat? Be a proper powerful. Wow, we the one minute. That's insanity. It's got to be longer than a minute.
have I allowed myself to get dropped here? Lack of concentration. Right, last of the coke. Dear Lord, please let us be grateful for what we're about to receive. How have I got dropped here? Okay, so about 50% of you don't, not in a dive chat, but about 50% of people that watch don't subscribe. Be super appreciated if you would subscribe and give it a thumbs up. About to go through the pain face scenario. We're at pain face DEFCON 4. Got to settle, find the equilibrium. No one's going to sustain this pace up here. This is where the 100% trainer did because he makes life hard. No, I am in the lowest gear. Wowie. Well, we Struggling here, Mick.
Sorry about the lack of talking. I'm in all kinds of trouble. Cheers, James. Cheers, Richard. Thanks for joining. Will do, Tony. Agreed.
Um, compact on the front, David. I don't know about that, George. Yeah. I'm in all trouble, all kinds. Close the ribbon.
I'm in a lot of trouble here. Cheers there.
Yeah, please do subscribe if you're watching and you haven't. Hugely appreciated.
Here's David. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. Plenty more of DEF CON face, pain face DEF CON 4 to 1 to come. They ain't always going to be like this though, my god. That was horrendous. I'm a fulsome 6 minutes 50 behind the winner. Wowie. Oh dear. Oh dear. I'm pretty happy with the power. I'm just going to regroup one second. Oh. Well, thank you all so much. That was a properly, properly big challenge for me. Especially having drained the tank on the Epic. What I'm most pleased about is the ability to recover and have a decent climb on the Alp. Also the Epic I think was a joint personal best in terms of time. And I've done it on the back of that horrendous lead in as well. So all in all, pretty good. I mean double draft would have helped. Oh. We had a heart rate recovery. It's all Ed Laverack's polarized training. He gets you doing 30-30s. Well, I've got a really disgusting training outdoors um, that will be on a vlog in a, in a while because I'm a little bit behind in terms of getting all the content out. I've got loads of content to come. But um, in the week, I did 20 times 30-30 into a five minute VO2 max effort, absolute max, two of those. So two blocks of 30-30s 
times 20 of them straight into the five minute effort two times and um you know obviously that brings your heart rate up and fatigues the legs and then you just got to dig in for that five minute effort cheers paul <laughs> yeah i mean oh yeah i definitely subscribe to that you know obviously you're always giving it your max and that's the beauty of cycling it's kind of really you against your own personal best that's what i love about the strava segments and things like that you know most of the time i'm nowhere near the kom you know i'm competitive but nowhere near the kom but i get a lot of pleasure out of gradually improving my own time and i think it's a bit like golf i guess in that respect oh dear me so you can see there that i did try and ride my own pace on the out the guys in front of me went off like a completely unsustainable pace and I kind of knew it. I tried to stay with them and that burnt me out a little bit so I went for a really really low point about one and a half two kilometers into the Alp I really didn't think I'd be able to kind of put in a decent time but by keeping the cadence high and I really I really do emphasize this the cadence I've got a video on cadence that's coming Chris has just edited it I need to have a look at it it's Jane's birthday this weekend and my daughter's 18th, so lots going on. But I have a whole video really about the importance of cadence, especially in Zwift racing, because on that climb, if I try to grind it out at 70, 60 RPM with loads of out the saddle, there's no way. And with training difficulty on 100%, you can see that I have to get out the saddle really when the gradient hits 11%. And that is exactly like in real life with a 32 on the back and um, a compact on the front. And so when people are saying it really doesn't matter the trainer difficulty, I am very much of the view that there's, there's Petri, hey Petri, nice racer. I'm very much of the view that it does matter if you want the power and speed indoors to translate outdoors because when I was in Italy with a 32 on the back I'm on the very first climb and we've just James literally just editing the video to compare the first and last climb the same climb I went in expecting to spin all my way up a 19 sorry 9% average gradient sort of 9 kilometer climb including you know the ramps at sort of 11 to 14 percent and there's just no way you can do that um, on a 32 unless you're Ed Laverack and you're strong like really strong thank you very much yeah for the birthday girls oh. but on that climb there with the Alp by staying seated for as much as I could and only getting out the saddle really when we went past 11 percent and trying to keep it at the upper end of sweet spot, lower end of threshold, that's what got me up there. It was basically riding to power. And I know people say get up and out of the saddle on the hairpins, but I reasoned, normally I agree, if you're going for a personal best on the out, you've got to go up a couple of gears and keep the power going. But when you're so fatigued, and I was very fatigued when we hit the bottom of the out, I think with the hairpins and the gradient leveling off, it's better to spin up a little bit, let the watts come down, and then gradually spin, let the cadence come back down and drop the gears a little bit. So, sorry, to recap, when I'd hit the hairpin, I would go up a gear or two, but I'd allow the watts to come down and the cadence to come up even higher. And then, as you're coming out of the hairpin and the gradient's coming up, I'd gradually take one or two of the gears off to try and keep the cadence going. And those little micro recoveries, believe it or not, on the hairpin make a big difference, like a really big difference. Um, yeah, for a PB attempt, absolutely. When you're fresh and you hit the out, you go up a couple of gears and you really either increase the cadence to get the watts sort of even, or um, you get up and out of the saddle, as, as, as Mick said. Spin to win. Yeah, it definitely is spin to win. Unless, I reckon, you've got a short, punchy climb, and then it's mash for cash. Well, I rarely descend, Andrew. I rarely descend. 
but I'm trying to spin the legs out a little bit here just very gently because that took a lot out of me um, the training stress there will be as much as I've done I guess in you know since I got back from Italy I, I do prefer if I'm really being deadly honest with everybody I do prefer rides of really no more than an hour and a half two hours tops I get more pleasure out of going really hard within that two hours for a period of time than I do the really long rides <laughs> yes <laughs> the face looks worse um, than um, it probably was Ian how did you go have you finished now sir I didn't see uh, what, what time did you get in oh it was hell this is probably one of the hardest courses I've ever done I think the only way they could have made it more disgusting is sticking the radio tower climb at the top I think I would have literally cried I'd have had to get off the bike have a little moment cry and then get back on <laughs> and mash it up there I mean with 100% trainer difficulty the last time I did that it was properly difficult David Raynham, always descend. Do you know what, actually in Italy, I did enjoy the descending. Um, Davide, who you'll have seen in the videos, he rides for Cipollini um, and he races for them. I said at the very beginning of this, he got um, a P3 in a very, very highly competitive crit race. The speed was insane. Average speed, 45 kilometers an hour. And in a crit race, that's right up there with like elite category um, in the UK, I think, or, but anyway, I digress. I was over about an hour and 10, hour and 15. Super punchy profile. Um, it was really nice following Davide down the climb because I was watching his line and all that kind of stuff. And because obviously um, the Garda Bike Hotel is you know, providing the guides, they don't go too quickly down the descents. It's a rule that you know, you're not gonna mash it down the descents because obviously safety matters. Yeah, zone two is blue. Um, zone three, I think, is green, uh, Michael. Yeah, definitely. Thank you for joining, Michael. Um, Alessandro, how are you? Yeah, tempo is um, green. Yeah, that's correct. Three. Blue is two. Um, Grey is one. Um, do you know what, Michael? It, it depends. If you're starting off with fasted training, early in the morning yeah definitely a blue workout you know 20 minutes and 30 minutes and then gradually building to an hour of zone two fasted will help with the fat loss I think that's a personal view opinion is divided on fasted training but then equally the high intensity stuff i.e. the 60 30s 40 20s um, 30 30s into threshold 30 30s into small VO2 max efforts they really ramp up the nervous system and the metabolism and so even though you might only be doing like two blocks of 20 minutes um, and not dissimilar training stress the calorie burn is sustained for long after the training has ended so high intensity training can be good but you don't want to start doing that fasted you need to build up to it um, and so oh, well, my inner thigh is absolutely killing me so they, oh, it's, one second. It's like I've pulled a muscle. Dear me. Yeah, the main thing is finding consistency and just gradually increasing the duration or the intensity of the training and watching what you eat. And you've got a choice. You can either do more training. Oh, God. This isn't good. Oh, it's like. Oh, I haven't had a pain like this in my inner thigh for eight, well, ever. I'm gonna have to stretch. Um, yeah, you've got a choice. You either gradually increase the calorie, uh, not increase, decrease the calories consumed and keep the exercise the same in terms of duration and intensity, or you make a little increase to duration and intensity and keep the calories the same, or a little bit of both. But you don't wanna go, if you're looking to lose body fat, all in at the start. You don't want to kind of cut a thousand calories and go max effort on the training because then you've got nowhere to go because the body is clever. It always reaches an equilibrium where it tries to hold on to the body fat. Um, because in times of many millions of years ago, or thousands of millions of years ago, human beings have only been around a couple of thousand years, but 
fat is what you have to rely on obviously when times are scarce in terms of food so the body does slow the metabolism down in order to hold on to the fat and that's why you want to make lots of small changes over the weeks and as the weight loss on the scale stops you make another small change to either increase duration or intensity of training and or reduce calories or a little bit of both yeah i think it might be a cramping muscle it stopped there it was quite an intense pain i was like oh dear this doesn't bode well for poor lot but actually it's all right i think it was probably the hardest effort i've done in a hell of a long time let's have a look at it i tire of uh, going down the hill so let's go to the menu Oh, someone's got a roast dinner cooking. It does smell pretty good. See, look, I'm really happy with that. Like 20 minute power within all of that of 292. That is big. Now, I have to say, I wouldn't have done that outdoors. I, I know for sure outdoors I'd have been 10 watts lower because you'd have seen me at times. I'm just like literally head down, focusing on the power. And you can go absolutely all in on the watt bike. And outdoors, I'm, I think I'm always like a tiny bit held back and just trying to obviously control a bike yeah more muscle equals more energy burn yeah Alessandra yeah that makes sense thank you for sharing that yeah I, I enjoy these kind of conversations homo sapiens originates 200,000 300,000 years ago I think you're right Niels that's like Neanderthal man and before Neanderthal man but the current incarnation of human beings I reckon I think it's only like 2,000 years we've been properly around. Is it it's something ridiculous like that? It's tiny. Was it 200,000? I don't know. I read a book on it. You have to forgive me. I am away with the fairies at this point in the day. Yeah, he, yeah. Yeah, Alexander, definitely. You can empty the tank indoors without fear of crashing and all that kind of stuff. And I also think, and Jay makes a good point, when you're outdoors and you've got the switchbacks and you're trying to kind of gauge... Um, you need the line on the road and there is cars and things like that and other riders more energy is going to the brain um, so I do think it can be harder to kind of just sustain the power on the climb outdoors over a long duration like I say over 20 minutes I'm all right five minutes again no difference in power indoors versus out thank you all very much anyway yes apologies I'm keeping everybody uh, from Sorry, well, I know you can go whenever you want, so apologies. Let's have a quick look at the power graph. That's what I was going to do. I was going to do the lever. So we go to the end. Oh, thank you very much for joining, Mark. Really appreciate that. Um, and so let's have the timeline. Yeah, I mean, that's hell. That is a nasty graph. 155 TSS. Quite a few calories burned. Well, it's a long old race, isn't it? The, the average was higher. It was 260 for the race itself. Obviously, coming down the mountain brings it down. And let's have a look at the critical power. It may be, yes, 30 minutes, not far off. But look at this. Am I, am I, have I got a best? Yeah. I'm kind of in that 258 range. Yeah, so kind of right, oh, I don't know what's happening now. What's this? So it looks like I've got, I don't think, uh, oh, yeah, I don't know. Who knows what any of that means? <laughs> but anyway, if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Um, do watch Comhunt TV's premiere, 8 p.m. this evening. It'll be super funny. Check out Georgia Capella's channel as well. That is sensational. Agnes, enjoy the fact that you had your 160 kilometer, 100 mile ride. Enjoy the moment. Um, and in the meantime, whoever you are and whatever you do, Please remember to live, thrive, and stay healthy. Take care all.